As many of you know, I conduct complementary board career assessments where I will meet with a prospective board member. I'll have a chat with them about their experience, their board qualifications, you know, where their experience lies, what's their unique value proposition and what type of board roles they would be suitable for. And I'm happy to, you know, sort of paint a little bit of a picture of what's possible and give some general advice. What I've found recently on a number of these calls, I've literally conducted about 600 of these calls in the last uh, 30, 40 days. You know, I've been a little bit surprised. You know, a lot of people who are coming onto these calls firstly haven't done their research. You know, they haven't even bothered to find out who I am and yet they've booked into my diary for some time with me. You know, you just don't get a lot of opportunities to try and create a second good impression. And, you know, if a corporate headhunter, whether it be an executive search firm or a board search firm, any corporate headhunter that uh, affords you the opportunity to meet with them personally you really should show some respect do some research on that individual find out what their specialties are view their videos have a look at their um, social media presence it's not difficult to do some basic research before you get onto a call you must know who you're talking to I had several people sort of make a very offhand comment at the start of the call saying, oh, you do do recruitment, do you? Uh, That type of comment, so disrespectful. Now, I'm obviously very polished and used to talking to people from all walks of life, so I won't make that person feel uncomfortable. But I always make a mental note when someone is disrespectful, hasn't taken the time to uh, do their research and coming into a call uh, with a corporate headhunter who's potentially going to place you onto a board of directors. Keep in mind, this is the most senior, you know, role in the company. Uh, you need to, you know, have your presence, you know, really well, well thought through and, and, you know, thinking about how you're going to pitch yourself. You also need to consider how you're going to present continually. I see people turning up to these calls, very casual, hoodies, sweatshirts, uh, coming from exercise, um, you know, it's just not on. I I just don't understand it. I I asked my colleagues the other day, what's, am I old fashioned? What's going on? You know, everyone's turning up to Zoom calls, very casual. And look, maybe that was acceptable for a short period during COVID and everyone was working from home, but we've got to lift the bar. If you're trying to impress someone to serve on the board of directors, dress like you would for a normal business meeting. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean you can sort of afford to be more casual or, you know, just really sort of not looking the part. You know, it just doesn't create a great first impression and and you are being judged. There's no two ways about it. People make snap second decisions about you based on how you communicate, how you introduce yourself and so on. The other thing I'm noticing during these calls is I obviously ask a number of questions and there's a reason behind the questions that I'm asking. I'm asking questions about people's qualifications, um, you know, what sort of board experience they've got. And people are often just saying to me, well, I've got two not-for-profit boards on my CV. Um, I'm looking for my next board. And then I want to drill down into those boards. I want to say, well, tell me about which boards you're on. Tell me about the remuneration. Tell me about the revenues. Tell me about what you've achieved in the last six months. And there's almost like a, how do I say it? There's almost like um, a little bit of anger coming through. Like, why are you asking me that? You know, why are you asking me these questions? And in fact, I actually had a lady yesterday who said, well, what's the purpose of that question? I don't understand why you're asking that. And it was almost like she was offended that I was asking about her experience. So, If you're going to meet with a corporate headhunter, if you're going to meet with a board search consultant, rest assured they're asking questions for a reason. They're trying to ascertain your experience. They're trying to ascertain how you answer these questions, how you interact with the headhunter. They want to get a sense of how you operate and how you communicate. Now, if you want to be uh, testy about it, if you want to be offhand about it, if you find these questions offensive, well, quite frankly, you're in the wrong room okay you need to sort of really take take a check you know it's just not appropriate you need to build rapport with the headhunter understand they might be asking some questions that 
well, you might not fully understand the purpose of it, but the, the, there's a reason behind it. So, you know, be forthcoming, be e eager to assist, eager to provide the information that that headhunter needs to assess your candidacy. And then finally, you really do have to become a conversationalist. Don't just take it that if a question gets asked, you're going to answer that and just be bullet, you know, being fired bullets, being fired questions and just answering those. Try and turn the tables around a little bit. Ask a question yourself. Um, ask about, well, what type of clients do you recruit for? Uh, how are you finding the board search market? You know, what's going on for you? You know, are you finding that the business is busy? Do you see more recruitment happening at the end of the financial year? You could ask a heap of questions that would enable this to turn into a peer-to-peer -peer conversation. Now, a lot of people I meet, and I, I, again, I don't know how to frame this, but I meet people who just have no personality. You know, they're coming to these questions and they're operating at a very senior level, and I don't know whether it's Bambi in the head lights but they're coming to these meetings and they're not having a rapport they're not building a rapport they're not asking questions they're not making a, a two-way dialogue and it's absolutely crucial that you learn the art of having a good conversation um, you are trying to impress someone you need to be interesting um I mean, remember years ago, Alex Malley, you know, who was the CEO of CPA Australia, he used to go around his executive team and he used to ask them what makes you interesting. And he would force his team to try and come up with uh, some interesting dialogue, some interesting anecdotes. And his philosophy was, if you're not interesting to me, you're not going to be interesting to our clients. So, you know, he was trying to, you know, land the point that you've got, got to be able to be able to hold a conversation. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people at this level I'm finding just don't know how to do that. You need to learn. You need to take this offline. You need to work out how to build that rapport. But, you know, the, the, the key messages here are you need to present well. You need to present well verbally and physically. You need to look the part, dress well, even for video conferences or video meetings. You need to do your research on who you're talking to. Never walk into a meeting with a corporate headhunter, a board search consultant, not knowing who you're talking to. Show some respect. Indicate to that, that individual you have done some research. You have studied that individual. You'd like to know more about that individual. Become a, make it become a two-way street. And, and this is my final point. You know, don't be a taker, be a giver. You know, too many people in life, you know, walk around, you know, the business world taking. What can I get from you? Uh, can I get a board seat from you, Kylie? Can I get an introduction from you? Turn the tables and see how it works. Because if you turn the tables and say, Kylie, how can I help you? Do you need uh, a referral of some excellent candidates? Do you, you know, would you like some more board uh, search inquiries for your business? How can I assist? How could I contribute to your network? How could I help your ecosystem? I had a very sophisticated person on my call yesterday and, you know, he was from the KPMG kind of uh, world, so very used to sophisticated selling. Towards the end of the call, he said, now, how can I help you? How can I contribute to your business ecosystem? What would be the top three things I could do to assist going forward? Now, you become incredibly indebted to that person when people try to assist and you want to go out of your way to assist them. So it becomes this incredible, you know, era of reciproc reciprocity. I haven't got that word right. I'm so sorry. We, we uh, you know, you've got to be able to make it this two-way street. So, um, you know, really think about how you're presenting. Think about how you can create this incredible rapport between the parties. And then, of course, think about your follow-up so they're my top tips you've got to pay attention to this this is definitely where you differentiate from the average run-of-the-mill executive who's sort of out there on the hustings you've really got to think about how you present and how you leave that lasting incredibly good impression